Spurrier Works Cinema, where we watch all the movies. Today is another random movie review, this time of 2013's Assassin's Run, also known as White Swan. Uh, we will not be reviewing the media format because I watched it via a streaming service, so really no disc to review. First off, Assassin's Run... One second. Take a look at the cover of this movie. Now that you've had time to digest that excellent cover, I bet you're waiting for a Call of Duty-type movie featuring Christian Slater and Cole Hauser running with army gear and guns and shooting everyone. That's yeah, not in this movie. Um, <laughs> if you look at the picture closely, you can see that isn't even their bodies. They had two pictures of a soldiers and photoshopped Cole Hauser and Christian Slater onto those bodies. Not only do neither Cole Hauser nor Christian Slater ever hold a gun in this film, they're not even soldiers. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they're in one scene together in the entire movie. They're also supporting actors. I can't really describe how much I hate when studios or distribution companies buy a title and then alter it with either the title or cover to misrepresent the film as something it's not. You end up with several things. Disappointed people buying the movie. Christian Slater fans are going to be upset. He dies off in the first 15 minutes. So if you bought it for him, you're going to be really pissed. Um, it also advertises it like it's a balls-out action movie where you're going to see army combat. Everything on there says army. There's no army combat in this movie. That said, the movie's not bad. So the director also made a movie back in 2009 called Sappho, which is beautifully filmed. Um, it's an interesting film to take a look at. It's also very erotic. So this is kind of an interesting uh, film for him to do. It's not so much in the same vein, but the cinematography carries over. This very small budget movie filmed entirely in Russia looks like a bigger budget film. Um, so as far as his technical, the guy knows what he's doing. The movie stars Sofia Skaya. Sofia Skaya is a real ballet dancer from St. Petersburg, where she was born and grew up. Um, from reading the credits, it's pretty obvious this is a vehicle for her. She's also given producer credits. She has a directing credit. Um, her husband is the executive producer. So this is obviously a pet project of hers. And that brings me to the cool part of the movie. Inasmuch as Drunken Master was a drunkard can do kung fu, this is ballet kung fu. Um, the movie is a decent, starts out as a thriller. She's the wife of Christian Slater who's killed off by some mafia guys and then they frame her and she's got to escape and save her daughter. While in prison, she remembers her ballet training and does stretches and exercises like a great little montage. And then all of a sudden she can fight doing ballet and kick everyone's ass. Now, yeah, this might be a little ridiculous, but as soon as this happened, I have to admit I was sold. Ballerina doing kung fu. You can't beat that. It reminded me a lot of the a really old Fat Albert cartoon where one of the kids learned ballet and everyone made fun of him so then he could kick all their asses with the ballet. And that's exactly what you have in this movie. Uh, you know, Sophia's a good dancer, for real. So it the moves look genuine. They look nice. I mean, yeah, sure, could she beat up all these people? Probably not. But it works in the movie. It's very fun. Um, the little girl is a mediocre acting, but that's, you know, tends to happen with a lot of kids. Otherwise, she carries the movie okay. If you're looking for a good, solid B-action flick, and the idea of Kung Fu Ballet doesn't make you cringe, I suggest checking it out. As far as the movie goes, I'd put it at a nice 6 out of 10. It's not the best movie, but I wasn't expecting much either, so it was highly entertaining. Hmm. 
One of the complaints I might have with the movie is the meandering plot line. You're given some red herrings with one of the characters played by Angus McFadden. You know, you think he might be bad, you think he might be good, and then he just ends up dead. And there's really no resolution to that. As a thriller, I'm going to say the movie's kind of a fail. As a fun B-action movie, I think it's definitely a win, and you should give it a look just to see the kung fu ballet scenes. They're highly entertaining. Um, so overall, I would say, yeah, it's worth a watch, but definitely don't expect too much. I hope you enjoyed our random movie review of Assassin's Run here at Movie Mayhem. Go ahead and like this video, make comments, whatever you want, suggestions, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next week where we'll delve into our first director series, starting with the legendary Bruno Matai.